Welcome to Black Cat Football's Valley Oak League Preview. It was such a nice day, I brought it outside today, okay? First of all, Valley Oak League, Oakdale has ruled it. Seven straight Valley Oak League championships. Been to the section final the last three years. Last year, section championship, NorCal championship. They went all the way to state where they fell to Sarah of Gardena, which is as close to a college team as you're ever going to see in California. This year, Oakdale, you can almost wipe the table clean. There's only two returners back at their regular positions. They got some talent, but tell you what, I like Manteca this year. I know it's been a few years since Manteca has really lived up to its potential. They've had tough playoff losses in the first round. Their biggest issue has been this. Manteca has struggled with speed, even Oakdale's speed. Oakdale's had some nice, quick kids the last couple years. Manteca, you look at their schedule, they open up with Central Valley. Then it's Wilcox of Santa Clara, has a big bruising running back. And then it's Los Banos. Not like last year, but they still got David Walker and Los Banos, still have some skill kids. So it's going to be a real good test for Manteca to see how they adjust to that speed. On the line, Billy Sharmug at left guard, Isaac McLean at left tackle. McLean's one of Cal High Sports offensive linemen to watch in the section. They're about 600 pounds of beef together, a nice line to run behind. Now there's no Marquise Miller, there's no... Andre Patterson this year. What they have is two or three backs that will kind of be able to run. Again, you're not going to see the big play explosive running game like you've seen from Antique in the past when they were winning section titles. But I think what you will see is a nice physical game. In the past, Manteca, they got out physical by Oakdale. Just beat up, and they know it. They dedicated the offseason to lifting weights, and now they're getting back in cardiovascular. Joe Manziel, quarterback. He carries a big role. They're going to have to throw, or you're just going to load up the line against Manteca, and that will be enough to stop them. But he's got some good receivers out there. I got the Buffs. They're my number three ranked team. Kind of high, I know. I have a lot of hopes for Merced and Manteca both. They're both probably ranked too high in my rankings. I realize that. But I think by the time the year is over, they'll both live up to that advanced billing. Oakdale, you know, originally I would have picked them third behind Sarah, but I'll tell you what. I saw them a couple times over the summertime, and as young and as raw as they are, they're already running that wing tee well. Here's a fun thing with Coach Trent Merzon. This is, he's been coaching 13 years. He has lost two league games at home, only two. He's going to have two quarterbacks this year and two offenses. So we got Deuces Wild in Oakdale, eh? Dylan Tamburino, he's the senior. Adam Olson, he's a sophomore. Played in the freshman last year. Came in in a couple of specialty packages. They'll both play QB. Oakdale, they're still going to win that wing tee. What they'll do, though, is one of their offenses will kind of spread out a little bit. Other offense, I think, is be a little more traditional wing tee look. Hondo Arporka has gone as defensive coordinator. That means that Tim Meyer comes over to run the defense. Tanner Morgan. Remember that name. He's a DB for Oakdale, but here's what I love about him. He's Oakdale's student body president for the second year in a row. The school has got to be a century old, and that's never happened before. Obviously, they got a great leader, but they also have a lot of good talent coming up from the junior ranks. I was out there a couple weeks ago, saw Trent Merzon. He's never been so giddy. All they could talk about was these new kids coming up. Great schedule. Open with Turlock Friday night. Then they have Enterprise of Reading, and then Paraclete of Southern California Power. I got Sierra number three. Love Jake Pruitt. Love that spread offense. Timberwolves always score lots of points. Where they run into problems is trying to stop the opposition. They've given Oakdale some real nice challenges, even beat them a couple years ago. But what's happened is they're giving up too many points. The question with Sierra this year, above everything else, Anthony Cota, he's gone. Three-year dominant running back. Who's going to replace Anthony Cota? As soon as we know that answer, we'll know what's going to happen with Sierra this season. After Sierra, you got to look at Sonora. Some people are picking Sonora to win the whole thing. This is their last year in the Valley Oak League. They'll go down to the Motherlode League next year, and wouldn't that be something? Sonora wins the Division Three Valley Oak League, best D3 league in the section. And then they let them go to Motherlode League? Oh, those Foothill schools, you think they're mad now? They'd be going crazy over that. The Wildcats, though, I got them fourth. Lose a lot of talent from last year. They got some good kids coming in. The question is this. They've struggled in late in the season to stay healthy. Numbers haven't been what they've been before. Sizes haven't been what they've been before. I think the issue is they don't match up well with Manteca's size. Oakdale, 
They got that psychological thing. Oakdale has dominated this series the last decade. It's not a rivalry anymore. In a rivalry, both teams have a chance to win. That hasn't been the case in this game. Sonora fourth, but I tell you what, they make the playoffs and they go Division Four. They have an impact in Division Four. They'll survive the Valley Oak League. They'll survive the tough preseason schedule. They get to the playoffs, they could win a game or two when they get there. Fifth place, I like Kimball. Here's why. They got some breakaway players. Again, another team that's going to be kind of light up front. Not the big lineman Manteca has. Not the big lineman Oakdale is going to have. And Oakdale is going to have big lineman, by the way. Get used to that. Kimball, though, they got three or four guys that can go the distance. And they got a neat new coach and Charles Spikes. Brings in a new enthusiasm there. I think he's going to recognize what he has on offense and kind of set up positions where those guys can break away for big play. You got East Union and Western Ranch. Lancer is from, from EU. They're going to the wing T. Wing T takes a couple years to figure out. You know, I'll wait for them next year, see if they can get the linemen in there. The key with that is going to be the precision. It's going to take another year or two to get those precise cuts. You watch Oakdale, the other wing T teams, these guys do it in their sleep. Western Ranch, Salmon Passing. And again, another team that has struggled with numbers the last three or four years. They had the one great season with the Saffles, but that's been about Lathrop. As long as Lathrop is in the Valley Oak League, Lathrop is going to struggle. Just a bad matchup for them all the way across. School's not big enough. Hey, that's your Valley Oak League preview. Hey, get out to games this week. And if you see the shirt, give us a shout. We'll give you the tip of the hat.